Healthcare is a basic human right, which should be available to everyone, regardless of where they are born or how wealthy they are. The most vulnerable and marginalized people in society are often most dependent on the public health system and are therefore most affected by how public resources are allocated. Health budget advocacy is about lobbying and campaigning to change the way public resources are used to deliver health services. It is a way of enabling your organization to help influence the allocation and spending of government resources to address the needs of different population groups, such as key populations, women and girls, people with disabilities, and other vulnerable and marginalized groups. Even if a government allocates funds to disadvantaged groups, weak financial management and a lack of political voice can mean that the money does not always reach them. Without health budget advocacy, civil society may not always be aware that the resources aren't being spent as they were intended to be. While the budget processes differ between countries, there are several key steps required for effective allocation and use of resources. This process is not linear and may include multi-year budgeting. Health budgeting occurs at various levels, local, provincial, or state and national. At both the national and local levels, civil society organizations rooted in local communities and working together within strategic alliances can play an important role in ensuring transparency and accountability. At national level, organizations can get involved in the planning processes and influence national spending priorities. At local level, civil society organizations can oversee health expenditures, monitoring what is spent by district health teams or even local clinics, and using their findings to call for changes to budget allocations. When you engage in budget advocacy, it is important that you devise an informed strategy and understand who to approach during which phase of the budget cycle. The budget cycle is described as having four distinct phases. Budget formulation. Budget enactment or approval. Budget execution and expenditure management and budget oversight and assessment, evaluation or auditing. By taking a closer look at the four phases, we can see how health budget advocacy can influence and contribute to shaping the spending towards different population groups. Phase 1. Budget Formulation During this phase, identification of needs and policy priorities takes place. The information required would include national health policy priorities, HIV-related strategic business plans, costing reports, past expenditure reports, and so forth. Draft budget submissions are then prepared by spending agencies based on policy priorities and situational analysis. Budget hearings are held to negotiate allocations between the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Health and other related agencies. This is a flexible stage for health budget advocacy, as it is here that resources can be freed up to increase the health envelope. Phase 2. Budget Enactment In this phase, the budget is tabled before the legislature and different committees for consideration. The legislature is not there to just rubber stamp the budget. And in some countries, the legislature has the legal capacity to amend within limits and approve the budget. Once approved, the budget is signed into law and becomes legally binding. Phase three, budget execution and expenditure management. In this phase, money is transferred to spending agencies, ministries, departments, agencies who initiate spending through payrolls, procurement of goods and services, purchase of capital assets and infrastructure, and so forth. Financial information is continually produced and recorded by financial systems and is regularly compiled into financial reports. At this stage, advocacy can maximize existing budgetary space for health by ensuring the predictable and timely release of funds and reducing the level of corruption and unused revenues. Phase 4. Budget Oversight and Assessment Auditing, Evaluation Oversight is the act of limiting the discretion of the executive arm of the government by monitoring its decisions, activities and holding it to account. A number of bodies are responsible for oversight in a constitutional democracy, including Parliament or the Legislature, Portfolio Committees and the Supreme Audit Institutions such as the Controller and Auditor General, which should be independent. 
The powers and capabilities of oversight bodies to hold the executive to account for their use of public resources and the delivery of socio-economic rights should be enshrined in law. There are different types of audits. Financial audits, attestation audit, in which the auditor verifies the accuracy and fairness of the presentation of financial statements. Compliance audits, in which the auditor checks if certain conditions have been satisfied. For example, has expenditure been authorized by competent authority? Has expenditure been authorized by the appropriation law and spent according to the law? Does expenditure conform to procedures of public finance and related laws? Performance audits assesses the technical and managerial aspects of spending to measure levels of value for money in public spending through three factors. Economy. Can program be run at less expense? Efficiency. Can relationships between inputs and outputs be improved? Effectiveness. Is the spending authority delivering its intended results, comparing performance indicators against actual results? How can you engage with the budget? During budget formulation, you can Conduct your own relevant costing and needs assessment studies Analyze policies, past performance reports, budgets and expenditures Mobilize communities and groups on budget issues that impact them Engage with relevant budget decision makers, health program managers, health heads of departments, chief financial officers, treasuries and relevant parliamentary committees. Write letters to the Minister of Health and the Minister of Finance and others. For the budget enactment stage you can analyse policy and budget statements, mobilise communities and groups on emerging budget issues, Make submissions to relevant parliamentary committees, for example, health committee, to at least influence the next budget cycle. Analyze and release budget briefs or a popular version of the budget to demystify the budget for CSOs and general communities. During the budget execution and expenditure management stage, you can analyze in your reports to make timeless interventions. Publicize quarterly findings and raise awareness of presenting issues. Use of various social accountability tools such as community scorecards, citizen report cards, social auditing. Leverage the advantage of intersecting community monitoring with budget work. During the budget oversight and assessment auditing stage, become friends of the Supreme Audit Institutions to raise awareness of your issues relevant to financial accountability. Analyze performance reports, budgets versus expenditures. Mobilize communities and groups on expenditure issues affecting service delivery. Engage with relevant budget decision makers, relevant program directors, managers, health heads of departments, chief financial officers, treasuries and relevant parliamentary committees on expenditure red flag issues. Budget advocacy should happen at all stages of the budget cycle and civil society should maintain a bird's eye view of all concurrent budget processes to be effective. Remember, understanding your country contexts is key for effective budget advocacy. Health budget advocacy can help you identify blockages or failures in the system, as well as inequities across different diseases, population groups, levels of care, or regions. By doing this, we can expand and maximize the budgetary space for health to ensure that nobody is left behind because everybody counts.